Hello everyone, I am Crawlers and because uh, Battlefield 4 uh, got a very extensive patch on the 6th of this here March, I'd like to go over some of these um, changes and read them out loud, kinda throw them at you, see what sticks. Uh, thing is, a lot of stuff got patched, uh, some of the stuff has been nerfed, some nerfed to shit very needlessly, as DICE usually does, and besides that, and the very long list of tiny changes uh, to weapons accuracies and hip fire and such, which I won't go into here because, you know, the list is ridiculously long and the changes are so small as to be nearly unnoticeable in normal gameplay. No, uh, what I will be focusing on here today is the main list of things patched, uh, some welcome changes, some not, some ninja tweaks which haven't been uh, listed in the patch notes, but we know are there because we can read the game files. And in no particular order, the March 6th patch changes are Increase the maximum rank to 120 Fixed an exploit that would allow players to shoot two tank shells with not enough delay between them, between the shots. Very sad to see this little exploit gone because I just made a video on the tanks uh, a while back and I included this little exploit as a tutorial and you know now it's pointless. Improved the track uh, vehicle wheel friction so vehicles don't get stuck on relatively minor hills. Eh, wrong vehicles dice, you asshats. It was the LAVs that couldn't climb the smallest of hills. Improved boat physics and handling, included the implementation of a system that lets players push, uh, push back stuck boats back into the water, a fancy way of saying knife a boat a thousand times for it to move back an inch. New vehicle disable mechanic, uh, previously if a vehicle is reduced to 10% or lower, it would start burning. Uh, burning up and behave like BF3 disabled mechanic. If you repair them past 10% they would stop burning and recover normally. Now there's a new variable called clear disabled damage threshold which generally is set 50% higher than the disabled threshold. This means that for a main battle tank or an IFV, to get them to stop burning you have to repair them past 15%. Increase the number of M84 flashbang and hand grenades to the player that they can carry from 2 to 3. Increase the effect of the M84 flashbang grenades on friendly and enemy players. Increase the maximum damage for the RGO from 67 to 80 however reduce the range of the explosion. So this, sh uh, this grenade should be a lot more, should be used for a lot more accurate throws now. Uh, reduce the visual and audio effect for the detonation of the V40 Mini to highlight its smaller blast radius when uh, compared to other grenades. Decrease the maximum damage from 80 to 60 and decrease the range at which maximum damage is applied. Increase the aimed accuracy of the M1911 to make it a viable choice once the Compact 45 has been unlocked. A very welcome change, I think this about time the M1911 saw some love from DICE. Increase the close range damage of the M1911, the QSC-92, the FN-57, the CZ-75 and Compact 45. Reduce the delay between pressing the trigger and the bullet firing for the M412 Rex and the 44 Magnum. This is pretty much the best change I could have hoped for, but I'm wondering if it's enough that DICE did this. I don't think there should be 
uh, a delay at all be between the uh, mouse pressing and the actual bullet firing for the revolvers. Increase the magazine capacity of the QSC-92 to 20 rounds. Additionally, reduce the recoil of the QSC-92 to give it a clear difference from the FN-57. Corrected a small error with the compact 45 accuracy when crouched or prone. Increase the accuracy of the pump-action shotguns, the 870 MCS, the Hawk 12 gauge, the SPAS 12 and the UTS 15 while on the move and aiming. I think this is a very good chance change because uh, the shotguns used to be all over the place and you couldn't hit anything up close even. Uh, reduce the long range damage of the Emptar uh, to bring it in line with the rest of the carbines, which I think was a pretty pointless change because the Emptar already wasn't a very good weapon but with the high rate of fire and the amount of vertical kick that it had. Adjusted the way uh, accuracy is handled when transitioning from hip fire to aimed fire. The heavy barrel's accuracy bonus now also applies on the move at a reduced bonus. This should give the heavy barrel a wider role for players who desire accuracy while aimed in all situations. Synchronize the timing of aim down sights animation of sniper rifles with the ability to fire with full accuracy. Players no longer need to wait for additional time after the aiming animation plays to get the accurate shots, because it used to be that you had to wait about uh, half a second after you scoped in on target to get the aim down sight uh, accuracy with the bolt action rifles. There is still a delay to achieve full accuracy, so quick scoping is still not possible, which is a good thing, I think. The SRS bolt action time has been tweaked and the rate of fire has been lowered. The goal bolt action time has been tweaked. The muzzle velocity for the MP7 has been reduced. Uh, the MTAR muzzle velocity has been reduced uh, from 570 meters a second to 540 meters a second. Updated the handling of the uh, one-time scopes for the Type 95B1, A91, uh, Steyr AUG, uh, the SAR-21, QBZ-951, FAMAS, uh, MTAR, L85A2 and the F2000. Updated rate of fire for the RPG-7 and the N-Law. Reduced the total amount of missiles carried by the mobile anti-aircraft vehicles from 6 to 4. Reduced the velocity of the MAA's default 20mm cannon from 1200 meters a second to 800 meters a second. So as to match the 30 millimeter cannon, which will obviously uh, reduce somewhat the radius of the effectiveness of the mobile anti-aircraft vehicle, as you know, they used to camp their spawns and just sit there and kill helicopters from across the map. So, you know, most players got a bit pissed at that. Reduce the physical impact of the anti-aircraft missiles to prevent helicopters from flipping uncontrollably when hit. The damage values have not been changed. So, you know, now you can fly, get hit and try to uh, recover easier from it. Reduce the co cone in which active radar missiles search for targets, making them require a higher level, level of skill in predicting where a target will be when f the missile is fired. Increase the direct damage done by attack helicopters gunner position, uh, the gunner cannon. The gunner cannon will now be able to assist the pilot in taking down vehicle uh, targets with this change, which is a very good change. I think the gunner uh, used to be pretty ineffective uh, against vehicles. Increase the direct hit damage of the Zuni rockets for attack helicopters. 
the rate of fire of these rockets combined with their smaller uh, magazine pool made them a poor, poor choice over the other two rocket types. And I know myself, I never used to use Sunni rockets in my helicopter, but this change might possibly, uh, you know, make people use them again, make them a good choice for tank hunting. Reduce the splash damage and the maximum splash damage range of the helicopter 25 millimeter cannons. So now you shouldn't be getting a hundred streaks with the uh, scout helicopter against infantry and maps where the other pilot is an idiot. Reduce the intelligence of the MBT law missiles uh, requiring the player to aim the missile closer to the target before the smart projectile will activate. Additionally, the MBT law now reloads slightly slower. And finally, a bug where the MBT law would pass through active protection has been fixed. Fixed an issue where active protection and the MPAPS did not properly stop uh, the 12 gauge frag rounds. Reduce the range where the M2 slam will do maximum damage to vehicles from 6 to 3 meters. The range was deemed to be too large, making the M2 slam far superior to the M15 AT mine. I'm actually quite annoyed with this change for obvious reasons. Uh, the slam was my best engineer gadget, and uh, this will do nothing to combat their proposed three slams in one area rule. Reduced the damage the staff shell does to all targets by 25%. This should balance the ease of use of the staff shell with its damage potential. Also a bit sad to see this nerf as you can imagine for obvious reasons. Uh, generally, I hate to see any nerf to weapons, but some are just annoying and pointless. Now for some bugs because DICE apparently doesn't have a single QA guy working for them, or he was asleep the day they rolled out the patch. Hell, I do their QA for free. The kill cams are still broken. Uh, TDM is plagued by another sound bug, which they are supposed to have been fixed, frankly, and the AR-160 is bugged horribly missing the long reload animation and the underbarrel launcher that's completely full barred. The goddamn hand grenades and hand flares go through floors, and the freaking laser dots that they said they would fix from getting stuck on walls still get stuck on the freaking walls. Honestly, are they even playing the same game that we are? Oh, and uh, to wrap this up, a positive tweak for once, uh, the tank canister shells have had their velocity increased from 450 meters a second to 600 meters a second. Uh, the pellet cone went from a 1, 1.0 spread to a 0.2, so it's a lot more accurate now. And there are 16 pellets per shot, uh, by the way and their max range was nerfed from 900 to 600 meters. The start damage was buffed from 35 to 43, and the damage drop-off range went from 12 to 25 to a whopping 100 to 200 meter range. The IFE canister uh, saw a similar tweak uh, with the minimum damage buffed from 8 to 10, and the damage drop-off range went from 12 to 25 to a whopping 100 to 200 meters as well. There are 12 pellets in a 0.6 cone spread. Okay, now, besides the official patch notes, as I've said, there are some uh, ninja tweaks which have been done, and they've been done to nerf a lot of stuff, and that's why I think uh, they were kept quiet, not to piss us off any further than we already are. So, uh, we know of these tweaks because obviously some of us can see the game files, uh, specifically uh, simthic.com, and uh, 
they post uh, the game files from Battlefield 4 and they uh, take all their gun data directly from the files and so I will read off these uh, changes for you right now so you know what is, uh, what is going on alright so the L85A2 suffered an RPM nerf from 800 to 750 which might not sound like a lot, but a weapon that's already not the star of the assault rifles with the worst idle reset uh, time of all after, uh, you know, firing is already pretty shitty, so no need to shit it up, uh, shit on it even more. The Javelin had an interesting tweak. Uh, it's damage buffed from 25 to 34 damage, which is pretty major because uh, now you can take out the tank with three missiles instead of four and because javelins always hit uh, top down they always do the same damage no matter what what is very annoying to me though is that you have to use like uh, three of the same missiles to take down one uh, inflatable boat or you know one fast attack craft because Obviously, one inflatable boat should be completely demol demolished with one missile, and it shouldn't take three. So that's quite a bit annoying to me. I don't know why, what DICE was thinking when they uh, came up with that damage model. Alright, so in Hardcore, the MLRS and the Mortar have had their uh, cross uh, crosshair uh, on the map added, and the attack jet... JDAM also had a crosshair added. Very welcome changes. Aim reticle on the attacks and stealth jets is now fixed in the center. The HUD is more bold and obviously these are also very good changes. The ASVEL suffered a damage nerf. Minimum damage went from 17 to 16 and it is now a 7 hit kill at long range, which is doubtful even uh, that you will place seven shots on a target because with the first shot multiplier of 3.5, you know, and uh, it, it's, just, it's just a horrible, horrible, inaccurate gun at range. It also suffered a muzzle velocity nerf from 320 meters a second to 300 meters a second. MTAR saw a reload buff, uh, its short reload going from 2.5 to 2.4 seconds, but it also saw a muzzle velocity nerf from 570 meters a second to 540 meters a second regular and from 320 to 310 meters a second suppressed. At the F2000 uh, suppressed bullet velocity got nerfed from 380 to 310 meters a second and its 1.6 times zoom alien scope can now be affected by uh, field of view scaling and by the way its laser sight is now perfectly aligned. The PIG or M60E4 for you regular folk uh, saw a muzzle velocity nerf from 610 to 560 meters a second regular and 380 to 310 meters a second suppressed. The gold sniper rifle saw a rate of fire nerf from 63 to 60 uh, rounds per minute. Uh, they also nerfed slash fixed the DAO-12 shotgun which is now bad all of a sudden. The rate of fire went from 220 to 200 rounds per minute and the flechette pellet spread went from 2.5 to 3. And they finally fixed the broken fl flechette uh, pellet count, nerfing it from 12 to 9 per shell as it was supposed to be uh, to begin with with all other shotguns. The defibrillator pedals now charge faster. MP7 also seems to have been hit hard with these nerfs. Uh, the muzzle velocity was decreased from 470 to 420 meters a second 
regular and 280 to 260 meters a second suppressed. Its short reload was buffed by one tenth of a second, going from 2.6 to 2.5 seconds, and the long reload also went from 3 to 2.9 seconds. The Zuni rockets got a buff to their direct damage going from 30 to 40, which is probably a very good change. Also, some weapons got a permanent attachment in a particular slot, like the ASVEL shows only the suppressor in the loadout menu, MP7 shows uh, the folding grip, DAO-12 shows the ergo grip, and the SR2 shows the vertical grip. Overall, uh, these are all the patch notes I thought were significant enough and infuriatingly enough that I wanted to share them with you. And uh, these nerfs in particular, the ASVEL nerfs, are seriously annoying to me, at, uh, to say the least. And I'd like to hear your opinion below. You know, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about these things. Uh, you know, should DICE have nerfed them or... Am I right in thinking that no guns need uh, lots of nerfs at this point? And as always, thanks for watching. Please rate and share this video as it helps my channel grow. Check out my other videos at the end of this one. And remember, in Soviet Russia, YouTube subscribes you.